I started this YouTube save in mid-July and now we're at this stage 20 episodes down the line where we're about to create history on this YouTube channel. We are one step away from winning a league title in England for the first time since I opened this channel four years ago. Although no, my like that step will trip me up and then I'll fall back down the stairs and end up in the playoffs. Uh, in the last episode, we took on Derby County away from home and beat them by two goals to nil, which coupled with Norwich's defeat to Birmingham put us level on points with them at the top of the league. And it was followed up with a 4-2 win away at Wigan and coupled with Norwich's 2-1 win at home, we went ahead of them in the league on goal scored. So basically, if that doesn't make you excited for what's about to come up, then nothing will. We do have some transfer news and Adama Diakabe has agreed to join Real Batiste at the end of the season for 4.6 million. Uh, they're currently playing in the second division in Spain so he will fit right in with all the other farmers over there. Philip Billing has also seen his ban increase to four matches which means he's out for the last two matches of the season. Sergio Regulon has also got himself an injury for three weeks which could mean he is out for the season as well. I feel like every player is out for the season at the moment. Philip Billing has also been training on long flat bullet throws which is going to be a fantastic tactic to use next year and if that fails then I'll just call up Rory Delap again and bring him to Huddersfield. Imagine a Rory Delap throw in on Peter Crouch's head. We'll win the league. I was advised to give a team meeting before our game against Stoke as this was the game which we could win promotion with. And when I gave the team meeting, three of my best players decided to go against me and say that I was putting them under incredible amounts of pressure. My three best players. Although, then again, Sordell, Brunt and Mounier aren't in those three. So, second best three, should we go with? So, Paul Clement did the press conference before the Stoke game and has said that he cannot wait to celebrate. I mean, I feel like the bottling is incoming now. Thanks, Paul moron. So just before we took on Stoke, Norwich played on the Friday night away at Burnley and drew 1-1 which put them top of the league again. And amazingly, both of the goals in the game came from my former players in Alex Pritchard and Hayden Janai. So at the end of the day, if you think about it, at least one of my players is going to be a winner this year. I mean, it should be ours, to be fair. But now I can announce the team that I've decided to play against Stoke City. Now, we've pretty much kept the same team that has played in the last episode against Wigan and Derby. Uh, the only only change is that Sam McQueen comes in for Regulon at left back. Pretty much we're playing the same formation, we're playing the same team. It's a winning combination. It's going to win me the match. And if it doesn't, then that's my fault. Look, I don't want to talk about pressure, but I know we're under severe pressure to deliver here. If I somehow end up in the playoffs, despite being top of the league, going into the last two games of the season... Because I lose to Stoke City at home. Oh, it's an absolute disaster. Now, Stoke do line up in a 4-3-1-2 formation. Boyan, Hugo and Vokes are their front three. Doesn't really strike fear into my heart, that. And they got Kieran Clark at the back. Why? I mean, you might as well give us the win now. And the title while you're at it. See, I've always gone on about how this team talk is the biggest team talk of the season. It is literally now the biggest team talk of the season. Well, we did lose to Stoke 4-1 the last time we played them. So if we can exact revenge on them, we should be all right. We should be all right. Well, this is very exciting. It's a full house at Huddersfield. And uh, Stoke are playing in pretty much the same colours as we are. I mean, that's a bit of a kick clash, isn't it? And we're on the attack already. And Steve Mounier runs towards goal. Oh, we scored after 18 seconds. Steve Mounier. Oh, what a goal from the boy. I was just standing there looking at my phone. Unbelievable sees Chris Brunt with the assist as well. Steve Mounier out of nowhere just starts running at the Stoke defence. You love to see it. What a strike from the boy. Oh, we have a highlight again. Nick Powell. Oh my goodness, Jack Butland's kept it off the line. You're going to be 2 0 up within three minutes. It's another highlight. It's three minutes into the game. We've had three highlights already. McQueen, Kachunga. Oh, it's stayed by Butland. And uh, saying that, Nick Powell finds Hudson Odoi. It's a great turn from the boy. And it's found Liam Kelly. Nick Powell. Oh my goodness, Butland saved it again. Four minutes on the clock. And we've had four shots. Uh, we're on the counter attack already. And uh, Hudson Odoi has just burst through the middle. And Hudson Odoi from goal is 2-0. We're going back to the Premier League, boys. Let's go. Callum Hudson Odoi. Oh, my goodness. We have absolutely destroyed Stoke. Absolutely destroyed them. 30 minutes on the clock. We're 2-0 up. Hudson Odoi has just run straight. I don't know. Is that Kieran Clark? Is it Kieran? It's Kieran Clark. I told you, Kieran Clark was the weak link. We've had 11 shots in the first half. 
Alright, we had four in the first four minutes of the half. Whew. Steve Mounier and Hudson Odoi, the two biggest players for us this year, have taken the game by the scruff of his neck. I don't get complacent. We are 2 0 up, but the game can change because Stoke can score two, just like we scored two. I mean, Stoke aren't going to score, let's be honest. Stoke are not going to score a single goal in this game. I will happily put money on it. Stoke really haven't offered anything. For a team that, you know, are chasing promotion or automatic promotion, They've come here and done literally zero. Oh, and uh, Stoke have got a penalty and Chris Brunt has given it away. Go on, Henderson. 2-1. Stoke are not going to score a single goal in this game. Oh, no. Oh, no. Let's... Uh, oh, I've, I've pressed the wrong option. Oh, shit. I've pressed no pressure. I didn't mean to press that. And Steve Mounier here finds uh, Chris Brunt on the wing. And he chips it to Nick Powell. It's a great ch cross. Oh, and Nick Powell puts it wide. Of course he does because Chris Brunt's not allowed to assist. 30 seconds left on the clock. Chris Brunt out wide here. Just keep it in the corner, son. Just, okay, just... I'll oh, just cross it in the box there. Kachunga is done. Oh, he's offside. Oh, my God. That is so premature. It's like being with a female. We've been promoted. And why are they showing a replay of the offside now? Like, no one cares. Boys, we're promoted. Back to the Premier League. You love to see it. Steve Mounier, Callum hudson Adoy, Chris Brunt giving away a penalty. Great. But we've done it. We're back in the Premier League. And we still got one more game to play anyway, but... At least we played this one. So after securing promotion, it was time to focus on winning the title. And I went to check the social media to see if the fans were getting excited. I found out that Bobby had tweeted that she doesn't think we're going to do it. I mean, that's the spirit. And if you thought it was just the fans who were getting worried, Paul Clement came out and said that he doubted that we were going to get promotion. Great. Anyone else want to kick me while I'm down? But into the final game against Millwall we go and hopefully the final championship game I ever have to play on this series because I really don't want to go back to this league. It's a shit league. So Reguilon does return to the side because he's passed the fitness test and does make his place back into the left back. While Juninho Bakuna is a surprise choice in midfield replacing Lim Kelly. And pretty much the rest of the team is the same. It never changes. It will never change. It's a winning combination. I've said this last game. Now, I had recorded a live con for this match against Millwall, but when I went to listen back to the audio, it was absolute trash. So I'm going to have to go back to my old system of reporting the match rather than live comming it, which is a bit of a shame, because I'm sure you would want to hear me get absolutely smashed and listen to my reaction. Morgan Fox got the first highlight of the match as his free kick just went wide of our post. I mean, let's breathe a sigh of relief there. But we started going into the game after that free kick, and Elias Kachunga sprayed the ball out wide to Callum hudson Adoy, but his shot just went wide of the post. And just on the stroke of half-time, Steve Mounier sprayed the ball out wide for Tommy Smith, who ran onto it and put a great ball into the box, and Steve Mounier, without even trying, put the header into the top corner. The guy has pulled his socks up in the last two games of the season. I was about to say you love to see it, but I'm overusing the threes now. And into half-time, we went leading 1-0, and Norwich were drawing 1-1, away at Cardiff which meant that anyway we were still going to win the league because we had to win it's always nice to know and it was that man again Kachunga who then started running at the middle defense played a fantastic through ball to Steve Mounier who put it in the back of the net 2-0 give us the title now just put my name on that title well put Huddersfield's name on the title but put my name somewhere on that title and soon after that we made it 3-0 as Khan Irons corner found Nick Powell who volleyed it straight past Frank Fielding in the Millwall goal. It's amazing what you can achieve when you spend 48 million. I also decided to send on Marvin Sordell because he deserves his chance in a title winning squad. Premier League footballer Marvin Sordell. Don't you just love to hear that? And then some great pressure by Steve Mounier on Grant Hanley allowed him to steal the ball off him and then he passed the ball across the box from Marvin Sordell to make it 4-0 and put the icing on the cake. What a win. What a team, what a manager, what a series. And that was it. We had won the league on the final day of the season, winning 4-0. Norwich lost 3-1 at Cardiff. So even if we had drawn the game, we would have won the league. You love to see it. You love to fucking see it on this channel. And there's only one man who really should be lifting this trophy. And his name is Christopher Proud. See you next season. Wait, the board are only happy with the fact that I won the league. Oh, well, I'm taking this team down again next year then. Summer is here and it's fucking fucking buzzing. Have a can of kestrel and I'll kick me girlfriend's head in. I'm only messing when I'm hanging out with Bessin.